Hi everyone and thanks for joining me for episode 3 of I Edit Your Images. We've got a great collection of images to work through today and I'm excited to see what I can get out of them. Before we get started, I want to talk about one thing that I've noticed in almost all the images that have been sent to me. And also when I'm out in the field with people, I see them make the same mistake. And that is underexposing your images severely. You usually have to pull them up one or two stops during the raw conversion process to get them to the point where they should be. But what does that do to your image if it's too dark and then you're lightening it severely during the post-production process? It introduces a lot of noise into your image, it messes with the colors, and it also degrades the overall image quality. I totally understand why it happens that we're underexposing our images, and I've been making the same mistake in the past, but it's just a bad habit basically. In the field, we're always craving shutter speed. So naturally, we're prone to having a shutter speed that's fairly high. And we also don't want our images to be noisy. So naturally, we're trying to have a fairly low ISO. But what happens if we use a low ISO and a high shutter speed? We usually get a too dark image. And I think this is exactly the mistake that a lot of people make in the field. They don't want to shoot over like, let's say, ISO 400 but still want the 2000 or 2500 of a second in their shutter speed. And even if they go down to F4, a lot of times that image will still be severely underexposed. So what you have to do instead is learn how to read your histogram, expose your images as far to the right as possible so they're nice and bright and free of noise when it comes to starting the editing process. And then get out there and set your settings accordingly. If you're using ISO 400, Underexposing by three stops, your image might end up looking more noisy than my image properly exposed at ISO 1600. So I'd highly recommend for all of you to check out my video on mastering exposure so you can get yourself in a position to get the absolute most out of your images during the editing process and not making it unnecessarily hard on you. Let's jump into our first image, a Baltimore Oriole by Cindy. So when we're looking at this raw file now, we can see a decent gap on the right hand side of the histogram, indicating that we're a little bit underexposed, so we will have to brighten the image during the raw conversion process. And whenever I see a red, orange or yellow bird, my alarm bells go off because these are the three most difficult colors to handle during the post-production process. When I'm looking at the Oriole here, I can see how the orange and the bird goes from kind of too bright and yellow on the wing to kind of oversaturated on the belly and the chest. So this is something that I will definitely have to work through during the editing process and be aware of. And there's our final image. I think we managed to really nicely make this stunning bird stand out, dealt with the orange colors, the variations in the colors, and really made that image shine. So let's click off all my layers and I'll show you what I've done. So this is the file right after the raw conversion process where I lighten it and I try to bring a little bit more details into the blacks and also into the orange. So after the raw conversion process, there were still a few areas on the bird that were too bright that I couldn't contain within the one raw file. So I created another file that dealt specifically with the areas on the bird's wing and some of the orange areas in the bird's chest. So I pulled back saturation, pulled back vibrance, pulled the highlights all the way down, increased the shadows a little bit and darkened the exposure a little bit so that I could get something that I can brush in just to those two bright orange areas. The next layer, is my liquefier and I want to show you that now. It's basically what people are using as well if they want to take a few pounds of a model for a cover shot or things like that. So first I'll show you what I've done. Basically I just shrunk the purge slightly. So let me do that now for you. So I press Control, Shift, Alt and E to make a merge layer of all the visible layers and then I go to Filter 
liquify and then I go to up here on the left the forward warp tool and then what I can do I can just push in certain areas of the perch making them look a little bit smaller a little bit nicer to look at but you have to be careful you don't want to do it on the bird so if you do it on the bird you kind of messing with its shape so you don't want to do that or pull down on the leg too much I don't use it very often but on an image like this it kind of lends itself towards it because the bird is so nice the background's nice and even the perch is really nice it just is a little bit overpowering for the bird so pushing it in slightly can work quite well so from there I created and saved two selections of my background one feathered one not feathered I saved them on an empty layer that are filled with black and when I now press control and click on that empty hidden layer it loads my selection and I can always go back to it so if I unclick it and hold control and click left click on that layer I get my selection back so what have I done after that levels adjustment then I did a curves adjustment that darkened down all the areas in the image that needed some darkening all the blacks some of the bright areas on the wing and those two bright lichens on the perch from there I did another curves adjustment that just kind of balanced out some of the orange on the belly and also brought a bit more detail around the bird's eye and then when I was looking at the image I thought that now the bird just doesn't have quite the right color it's a little bit too yellow a little bit washed out so I used the selective color adjustment in the yellow channel to just give the bird more of that color that I remembered having when I saw them in the field from there I did an overall S curves adjustment to give nice contrast to the image nice brightness and then I also ran a slight selective color adjustment on the background I think in the red channel or no, in the neutral channel actually just sliding away from the green adding a little bit more red to the background just because I think it matches the bird overall a little bit better and then from there I ran my detail extractor specifically to get more detail back in the orange feathers and I think you can see that that made quite a big difference in helping me to get more detail throughout those areas and up here in the wing and I've done the same on these lichens here as well just making them not so bright after that I just slightly adjusted the color balance made it a little bit more warm and then ran another curves adjustment this time in luminosity mode so it's only affecting the brightness and the contrast but not my colors after that like always I run my Nick white neutralizer and pro contrast when I looked at it at the end there was just three more things I thought the wing was still a little bit too bright so I did another curve to darken that down and lastly I pulled down minus 20 saturation in the red channel allowing me to take off saturation out of the orange in the bird chest why do I do that because I think it's still oversaturated the bird already is quite orange it doesn't need to be fluoro orange and also if I'm saving this file for web and I have to convert it to sRGB it will be incredibly hard to maintain the detail in the bird's chest because sRGB is a more limited color space so by desaturating it before saving it for sRGB I'm avoiding that the orange just becomes one orange mess without any details and that is something that will likely happen if you're not careful with oranges yellows or red before converting your file for the web and that's how we got to this really nice image if we now look at Cindy's image she's done a great job personally I would prefer the image to be brighter and I think I nicely managed to bring back the detail in those two bright areas on the wing both edits are quite nice it's a stunning bird and as I always say with editing a lot of times it just comes down to your personal preference and the style you're after Do you still feel a little bit lost and overwhelmed when it comes to image editing and how to apply certain tools and techniques that I'm using to your work? If that's the case, check out my image editing masterclass down there in the description. And in my masterclass, I'm taking you with me and show you slowly and step by step through my editing technique and teach you how you can apply all the tools and techniques that I'm using to your own images to make them look amazing. So check out the masterclass, get yourself a copy and make your images true standouts. The next image we're going to edit is this amazing great grey owl in flight image by Fabian. So when we look at the image, the first thing we notice again is that it's severely underexposed. When we look at the settings, we can actually see that it was 
quite a struggle to pull off this image. We're going 600 millimeters with a 1.4 extender, f6.3, 1600th of a second, ISO 1250. So there's not that much scope to change things. This is a difficult case because you still need the high shutter speed for the bird in flight. So you can't really decrease your shutter speed to get a brighter image. So what I would have probably done in this case is bump my ISO to 3200 at least. You're using a 5D Mark IV so you can probably get away with it. And looking at this image now, it's so dark that we likely have to increase the brightness by two or three stops, adding more noise in the end to it than if we had shot the image at 3200 and exposed it much brighter to begin with. But because we're using a 5D Mark IV, we should still end up with a really nice image. There's our final image. Really, really amazing and it's such a cool bird to look at. So what have I done? So as you can see, during the raw conversion process, I dramatically increased the brightness of the image and added a lot of warmth to the image, giving me a kind of nice and even base file to work with. Next step was to create a selection of my background, one feathered, one not feathered. And then I usually always start with the levels. That's what I've done here as well. Just brought in the blacks a fair bit and then lifted the mid-tones again because I didn't want the image to go too dark. But if you're printing, for instance, it's important that you don't have like a really big gap on the left-hand side of your histogram. So I always like to bring in the blacks to the point where they just start clipping. And then if the image turns too dark, I lighten it back up with the mid-tones. I pulled a lot of blue color out of the owl. You can see the owl has a really bad kind of blue cast. And this is something that happens a lot in our images and it's the main reason that our images don't look quite right or don't appear quite right or sharp to us. Because a lot of times we look at an image and like a great gray owl, our brain thinks it should be gray. But in this case, it has a severe blue cast. So we're kind of confused when we look at the image because we expect something to be gray or white, but it has a color cast. So if we remove that color cast, we can make our images look much, much better and they appear even sharper simply because the colors are cleaner. So that's something I pay a lot of attention to and that I do in my tutorial and that I do to all the images that I edit. If something is white or black or gray, I make sure that I strip out all the colors so these colors look nice and neutral and nice and crisp. So I've done that simply by going hue saturation into the blue channel and pulling the blues way back and then brushing that into the owl, taking out a lot of the blue. The next thing I've done, I thought the owl looks still way too washed out now. So I've gone in and done a curves adjustment, darkening all the areas of the owl that I felt like needed to be dark and needed to have nice sort of contrast. So from there, I've then brightened that just kind of facial area of the owl because I really wanted to make that a focal point of the image. Still felt a little bit sort of flat to me, just kind of gray neutral. So I added a nice bit of S curve and a nice bit of contrast, mainly to the white areas of the bird to really make them stand out and grab your attention. After that, I did a color balance adjustment because the image still felt a bit blue green kind of to me. So I added a nice bit of warmth and a nice bit of magenta to the image, giving it a nice sort of warm, interesting feel. So after that, I just increased a bit of the saturation in the background and then did another S-curve adjustment on the whole image, mainly just brightening it a bit more, balancing the background and the owl. And then from there, I added more color balance to the owl because as you can see, the owl is still kind of blue and green. So I added a lot of red, a lot of yellow, and a little bit of magenta, just giving it a more kind of neutral gray color. After that, I added 
NIC Pro Contrast to the image and a NIC White Neutralizer. Added a little bit more hue saturation overall and then also made the trees in the background a little bit more red, a little bit more warmer, really emphasizing that last light that's hitting the trees behind the owl with the owl kind of already flying in the shade area. And that's the final image. I think it turned out really well. It's such a cool shot and I'd wish it was my image. So when we now compare the edit that Fabian has done to my edit, I think what I managed to do really nicely is to bring the focus off the image onto the owl. The next shot I decided to edit was this really cool headshot of an Indian roller. And looking at the raw file, there's not that many things that actually need changing, I think. It needs a little bit of a crop, probably needs to be turned slightly. And then I want to bring out the colors, I want to make the eyes stand out more. And then I have to make a decision. Do I want to make the background a bit darker, keep it, or make it a bit lighter? Knowing me, I will probably be tempted to lighten it a little bit, but Let's see what I'm gonna do, and I meet you on the other end with the finished image. And there's our final image. I think I managed to really nicely bring out the colors in the birds, make the eyes stand out. And as I thought I might do, I lighten the background slightly. That's just my personal preference. I think this image would look good with a darker background as well. Let's just quickly go through all my layers. First thing I've done was to make a selection, allowing me to treat the bird and the background individually. So next, I just lightened the eye area with a curves adjustment. From there, I lightened the background. After that, I lightened some of the areas on the left-hand side of the bird that were a little bit in shade. And then I darkened the areas on the right-hand side of the bird. So it evened it out nicely. So if we click these two on and off together, you can see how I put the focus away from the area on the left-hand side and shifted it kind of to the nice purple area on the bird and the eye area of the bird. From there, I just added a nice overall hue saturation adjustment, giving really nice colors to the birds. And then I also slightly shifted the colors in the background to a little bit more of a reddish tone because I thought that kind of greenish cast in the gray color didn't really work too well. And then at the very end, I just looked at the image and thought there's a couple more areas that need a little bit of attention. So I darkened down the beak a bit more to make that really nice and stand out. And lastly, I just added a little curve overall, giving a bit more nice contrast and depth to the image. So if we compare that with the image that was sent to me, the edit, it's actually not that different because the base image was already pretty good. Again, it was a little bit underexposed. So I had to brighten it in post-production. But the main difference between the two edits is now that my image has a brighter background. The original edit has a bit of a darker background. But other than that, I think both edits are really nice. I think this is a good takeaway that there's a lot of different ways to edit the same image and to get different but really good results in those different ways as well. And usually if you look at five different edits of the same image, you will always find things in each edit that you like and there will be things that you don't like. And now we're on to our last image, a Tufted Duck shot from Simon, or I should say Simon, because he's German. He sent it to me and he was saying that he was kind of struggling to get a good balance in the image because the whites are so bright and the color in the head is not really showing and some of the blacks are pretty black and the background overall looked pretty pale. So let's jump right in and I'll see you at the end with all the layers.
And there we go, finished. Let's look at all of that in detail. So this is how I dealt with the whites. I made one darker raw file, pulled the highlights all the way down to brush them back to this point. And then I cloned in some more feathers to make it nice and even. And on the beak, just having the darker raw file was enough to bring all the details back into the beak. So from there, I've done the things that I usually do to my images, levels adjustment, I've added a fair bit of saturation overall to the image because I felt like I really wanted to enhance those nice fall colors in the shot. After that, I removed all the color from the white and also from the reflection of the white because you don't want to have this white and then that really yellow. So I did that with just a simple hue saturation adjustment where I simply pulled up the lightness in the hue saturation layer to bring that up. And then I also thought that there's a few areas on the bird that are a little bit distracting, that are too bright, some reflections that the camera didn't capture very well. So I removed some of these too bright areas that really distracted from the bird simply with a clone tool and like a 50% opacity. From there I ran ColorFX Pro Detail Extractor and added a little bit more detail through the white areas here and the reflection as well. And after that, I made a selection of the background so that I could work on the background and the bird independently because I wanted to bring a bit more dark color throughout the bird and then it's difficult to all do that without the selection. So I made the selection and then I actually darkened down the background a little bit. Surprise, surprise. I don't do that very often, but I think in this case, darkening the background down a bit more brought a bit more drama to the shot and really made the duck stand out nicely. So after that, I used my selection and then brushed in some of these dark details on the bird, making the back darker, because I really felt like having the back too bright doesn't really add to our image, and having the back of the head and the back darker really helped us in this case to make the duck stand out. So after that, I just darkened down the area of the head a bit more and removed that one bright bit on the bird's face. Then I ran my pro contrast and my white neutralizer, removing a bit of that yellow color cast that was over the whole image. And lastly, I thought there was a few areas on the bird's back that are still super bright, so I toned them down a little bit by just cloning over them in a low opacity. So if we compare this image to the raw file, it's not dramatically different. What I basically just done, I added a little bit more drama to the shot by adding saturation and darkening the background a little bit and then adding nice color to the bird's head by selectively working on that and brightening certain areas and darkening certain areas like the back. And of course, I dealt with the blown out whites on the bird belly, making it really nice to look at. And if we look at Simon's edit here now, it's pretty similar to the raw file. It's lacking the detail in the white, and I think overall it's just a little bit flat maybe. Wow, that was some great images I got to edit today. I linked all the four photographers down there in the description so you can check out the Instagram accounts and their cool work. If you want me to edit one of your images, please head over to my Instagram account and send me a private message with one of your images that you want me to edit. I will then put it on my list of images to be edited in one of the future episodes. You might ask yourself, how long does it typically take to edit one of these images? I'd say between 10 and 25 minutes, depending on how difficult an image is. Some images are just pretty straightforward, kind of like that roller shot, where some images are a bit more involved, like that owl where I had to balance a lot of colors and get rid of the color cast in the owl and then add more contrast to the owl without really adding too much more contrast to the background. So there was just a bit more balancing going on to get it right. If you want to master image editing, I would highly recommend that you check out my masterclass on image editing down there in the description. It will really help you to tag your images to the next level. Also, please let me know in the comments, what did you think of today's edits? Would you do something differently? Have you learned something new? Let me know, I will try to answer all your comments. Other than that, please give me a thumbs up for this video. Subscribe to my channel somewhere down there. Check out some of the other content that I've prepared for you, and I will see you in one of my next videos. Bye.